Well, I can't give you the date. Uh, we're probably we're thinking March 1st or something along those lines. Anyways, uh, it is three hours and ten minutes into the day. Uh, we didn't do... Um, we did a vlog hours ago, more than 12 hours ago. But what happens, it's hard keeping track of the vlogs that you do uh, when you do them, particularly if you're working at a rate or a level that is uh, kind of mind-mending. This gets into noses because noses is now sort of bleeding into almost everything. Uh, It actually, it, it, once it, once you get on the right path, it, it affects everything you do. It's the way you see things, uh, uh, how you see things. Uh, a number of <coughs> issues kind of pop up. There's a number of things. Like, like, the, the dreams are are, are, are A realization of a realization of condition in terms of where you are, and how you accept the various different uh, scenarios that are presented to you, and more and more, uh, I'm becoming resigned to the state of existence that I have. It's not necessarily an easy one. It is not a pleasant one in terms of being one of the few people who see things the way. I see things, and I've kind of got a new focus now, to sort of, in some respects, in two different ways. Man, uh, I'm trying to focus on the camera, but I didn't have anything to look at. Now I have the time and the um, memory size to look at uh, up in the upper, upper left-hand corner, so that keeps my uh, eye focused close to the camera, so uh, you can sort of see it. But otherwise, my eyes will drift to the right, to where the uh, the <laughs> where the where the uh, symbol is for uh, on and off the uh, camera button, and that's away from the lens, and it looks like I'm <laughs> not looking into the camera. But the thing is, this this is what has to sort of happen. You have to have uh, some degree of uh, of uh, focus and sort of something to look at, uh, you know, look at the birdie type of thing in order to get things uh, straight. But again, this is sort of the state of existence. I don't do things exactly right. I stumble onto things, I stumble into things. Uh, there is no degree of perfection in my life. Uh, there is no sense of, well, okay, you're great at this and you're great at that and and everyone's, everyone's great at something. And This is not my case, this is not my reality. This is, in many cases, somebody else's reality, not mine. And... It causes a lot of focus issues because, as you're walking down the as you're walking down the path, uh, I gotta be a little more careful because it's, uh, it's, it, we're back in my office again and everyone's sleeping upstairs and I'm still awake. Um, I'm going into my hydration cycle right now as soon as I finish this. But it's a, a large chunk of these issues in terms of how you live your life and what could happen in the future comes out and it's your reaction to these different things. But of course, even in real life, as you go into these different situations, there are going to be challenges presented in terms of how you handle these various different challenges. And a lot of these things happened today when I went into a store. I don't wear a mask. Everyone else is wearing a mask, but I'm not wearing a mask because I have particular breathing issues. And But I think at the same time, there's no reality to what's going on today. The, the, most... What's going on is a form of paranoia. It's, 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 it's hypochondria. There's no reality to it. But I guess, you know, I'm not going to force my views on everybody else. But So I do what I do. But there are others who take it into their point that they're going to tell everyone else how they're going to live their lives and what you should be doing and, you know, and so on and so forth. And they make it their point to get in your face and try to rile you up. Trying to unsettle you. Trying to pull you off your center. And the thing is, the goal is you've got to maintain your center. You've got to maintain your cool. And at the same time, uh, not sort of give up who you are, what you believe in, uh, different things like that. 
And these come into the dreams as well in terms of you presented with these situations. Well, it's one one case you're dealing. There's one. There's one sort of re, set of realities where you're dealing with it in a dream, and then another when you're dealing with it in real life. There there are two different sort of compatibilities, if you will. And this is where the challenge comes in to sort of see whether or not things are working out, things are working properly, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. And this is where a large chunk of the difficulties come in. It's just to make sure that you're dealing with things in the right manner, the right uh, way. And it does become complex. It's not a simple thing. And there's a lo very, very long road. Uh, a lot of the solutions to resolving this thing aren't easy. Uh, most people won't listen. There are a lot of roadblocks. There are a lot of paths that are blocked in terms in terms in terms of informing people. Uh, the information is being blocked in terms of getting out. Uh, I heard the number of lies that are out there. Just all I have to do is look at the uh, whole thing with Bobby Soxers. Completely bullshit. It's complete unreality. Because all you have to do is look in the history of fashion. Look at the fashion by the decades, particularly with the way you're talking about teens, adults, and children. Different styles for, for different styles for teens, different styles for to kill children, different styles for adults. Let's look at those by the decades, and you'll find out that a Bobby Soxers is from the 1950s in terms of the teenage understanding of it. And this was what, what this was Buddy Holly. This is the Big Bopper, and this was uh, the Sock Hop. And the thing is, is that. To see that you have web, uh, online dictionaries like the Oxford Dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, having Bobby Soxers connected with uh, Shirley Temple, who was in the 1930s and 1940s, and is is the child style, not rather than the teenager Bobby Soxers, uh, it's completely way off. And I think is the sort of same thing, you know. They've got this guy Lionel LeBron. I always, you know, sort of knock him a little bit uh, because Lionel, and they have him associated with the uh, the ultra right uh, conspiracy group leader, of the ultra right conspiracy group, QAnon. Well, QAnon isn't anything. QAnon isn't any one particular thing, but that's what that's what it is, and he's a leader. Go watch his stuff. Go watch the history of stuff. Watch through his what he's done. And you find that he, in terms of his understanding, in terms of where his preferences lie, he's primarily on the left. He, he is he, he is what you would call a, a Bernie Sanders Democrat. That's who he is. In terms of how he aligns his understandings, his choice for for the for Trump when he became a Trump supporter in the sort of throughout the, the his the Trump's first term. And when this is after uh, the 2016 election, up to the 2016 election, uh, he wasn't a Trump supporter. He was anti. He was anti Clinton because he was a he was a a Bernie Sanders supporter. And it was the rejection of Bernie Sanders. It was the sort of the the attack on Bernie Sanders, the way he lost the primaries to Hillary Clinton. This is what pushed him over to Trump. This is what what caused the Trump win. In 2016, is that the Democrats had done such a bad job of attacking their own people in terms of attacking Bernie Sanders that a large chunk of the Bernie Sanders supporters went over to Trump. So, well, if this is the case, we're going to vote Trump. As Michael Moore said, the, uh, the 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 vote that you had in 2016 was, was the Bernie Sanders crowd saying, "Well, as a big, you know." To those, you know, for the uh, the establishment and, and the Democrats, who sort of ignored the people and went their own particular choices, and this is who Lionel is, and he still is like that. And you see, if you watch him now, he's moving off the political spectrum into an in, into where I am in an in independent sense. But he still has his particular issues. But uh, he's moving more towards the center. He's more. On an independent, he's off the sort of call the political scale. He's off the scale, so you can't describe him as a liberal or a Republican or a conservative or this or that. He's completely off the scale. There is no scale uh, for Lionel. You can argue with his views. You can argue with his perspectives, 
but but you can't argue that, that say he you can't say he's a liberal you can't say he's a conservative you can't place him within the QAnon because he wasn't part of the QAnon. As a matter of fact, in many cases he dismissed the QAnon. He pointed out how more often than not QAnon was right, wrong that the, a lot of the things that were predicted by QAnon never occurred. He stood up and criticized that. He also was very loud in terms of criticizing Donald Trump. So he wasn't a cheerleader for either side. He really took an independent position. But most people who watch, you know, look at Wikipedia and all these different uh, other, you know, <laughs> sources, um, they don't see that. But again, as the this as the view from Sigmund Freud is and Edward Bernays that most people in the world, the masses are well, idiots and morons. And so the elites the, who control the government treat the people as idiots and morons. So the, the question is, where do you stand? Are you an idiot moron to sort of accept what happens, what, what the government tells you to do? Or do you question? Seek f to, to seek to find answers. That's the hard part. Because the answers don't come right away. They come in a period of time. They come over time, so it takes a while to really get through everything. Anyways, uh, that's it for now, and uh, I will see you probably later on. Uh, you know, in the day it's Sunday. We'll be going to church in a few hours, in a couple of hours. So, oh, uh, we'll see where that takes us. All right, see you then. It is just uh, three hours, oh no, two hours and 54 minutes into the, the first day of March, and it's Monday. Uh, there wasn't much of a vlogging going on on Sunday. I did it just as my day was kind of finishing and switching over uh, to what was going to be the rest of the day on Sunday. That's, I thought it was the first, it's, it was actually the 29th. Uh, my but my sense of days are off, and apparently this was a leap year or something like that. So that's where we are. And as I said before, neutral gin kind of creeps into your life on a regular basis, and it really depends on how you view. Again, it's it's about how you take your your perspective on things, and, and Nosis really does have this sort of impact in terms of you become aware of more things than you typically would be uh, or the average person and this is what allows you to decide whether you're not going to go into whether or not you're going into neutral neutral gin or not uh, in terms of being a we'll call a, a, a more awake or more awoke person and oh what you see from the woke crowd is something that's more akin to really being sanctimonious. And as I said, the left are as religious as the right are. They, the left may not believe in God or have alternative views, but they're still very religious and they're still very sanctimonious. They're still very self-righteous. And this comes up in a point that you, you try to avoid this stuff, but it a lot of it comes tripping into your life, and uh, you deal with it as it comes along. In this case, I was uh, going through my Instagram account, and I follow a YouTuber that that uh, is part of my YouTube stroll. It's our life, and you have this uh, account pop up, and they, they, it's, they they claw it's our life, but it's another version of the official account, and what it is, it's a hack account. Now, typically, a hack accounts are put up. It's it's not too hard to to do the research to find out who they are, and I'll post pictures as we go along. I'll post pictures uh, to show you what's going on, here. and it, it, it's unbelievable. You look through the you look through the account, and they're saying, "Oh, Kendall uh, Rich is this horrible person." It's going off on, on the on the mother of the vlog. Uh, the name is Kendall. I don't necessarily know why she this person is doing this guy is a, a guy doing this. It's 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 a guy called. I actually 
follow his 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 link there, and so it's the dad challenge. Uh, dad does challenges on YouTube. That sort of seems to be the originating thing. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the Dad Challenge Channel. And let's see here. Let's, uh, I'm not going to play a little bit of any of it because it, it, you'll have a copyright thing here. Uh, some of the views is uh, 2.7 views. 2.7K views. Uh, 26,000 views. Uh, 17,000 uh, 17, views. And what he does is he attacks other family channels. That's what he does. He spends most of his time attacking uh, family channels. And this is how, it's not just Kendall Rich he does this, he does this to all, I went to see, you know, was this simply about Kendall Rich or is he doing this to other channels as well? Well, it turns out he's doing this to other channels as well. What are his primary issues? Well, he talks primarily about uh, Kendall Rich. Well, I did a number of snapshots. I did a number of screen captures. So I'll go into that. It says, you hear, it says there, Candle Rich, it's our life. They are Trump foes. I'm not. And, and, and are well aware of me. So, anyway, so what? His, his main thing in here, what's this whole thing? They're Trump supporters. So you go through his channel. This is his TikTok thing. He does this thing where he says, uh, Kendall Rich should not be here apocalypse on your apocalypse team. Can't drive at all. And again, it's, it, 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 some of the things they do uh, that they do are, are kind of you know sort of out there, but they, you know, that's part of who they are in terms of a personality. But he's sort of picking this out, and this is the guy who uh, talks about the apocalypse zombie. The, uh, the zombie apocalypse. And the thing is, is that he goes off on these rants, and sort of reading through this other thing here. And one thing goes, he goes off. He talks about her, her going to Starbucks. There's a lot, lot, lot of times in the video they're going to Starbucks. They're, you know, and a lot of watch any, any watch any female vloggers, any of the female vloggers. How many of them? How many of them go to Starbucks? A large chunk of them go to Starbucks. But yeah, this is his issue, and and, and this is his primary issue. And then he says, uh, 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 she cares about Starbucks and Disney more than she cares about. Uh, getting uh, speech therapy before a special needs son. Well, if you know watch, if you watch the vlogs at all, uh, and you watch them, and you watch them, you know that uh, uh, that uh, Bones is in a special needs program. He's there. He's he's already enrolled. So he's not criticizing the mother for 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 uh, you know Bones's uh, shortcomings as a special needs uh, child. He's criticizing the speech therapists who are working with the guy. He's working with the kid. He doesn't realize that. But, they, but he doesn't care. And as you go through the account more and more, you see or see, you know, that, that he's just, he's just ragging. And, and it's not, because his, 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 his issues really aren't really issues. He's nitpicking. It's not until you get really near the, 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 the beginning of it, you get to go through a large chunk of his account to get to the beginning. And what do you have here? And it's it's, 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 it's issue here. It says, it's, uh, Trumpies be, uh, Trumpies today be like Kendall Rich. And this is what he's posted up. He says, it is, says, uh, um, how Kendall Rich, it's our life, uh, uh, but you are Trump, Trump followers laughing my ass off. 
Đấy. And then you go back to the early part of this thing here. Is it? He uh, says, uh, the picture, again, not his own picture, he's, he's taking pictures and screenshots of the videos and posting them on his Instagram account, which looks like uh, it's our life. And it's our life, he does this our life uh, thing with, it's, it's, uh, it's our dot, it's, it's, it's our life, it's our, it's our dot life, and life is spelt with two E's. This is how he does it. He says, so he's, he, he, he picks on the design of the bedroom for girls, teenage girls. He says, at least, he says, I'm not a Trump follower. But by the way, I'm a, a combo Republican and independent, but I would, would never fall an ass like Trump. So what you get from this guy, Right, and the thing is, he he he's he he's got this thing where he's going after these people who are Trump supporters, and this is where you see a large chunk of the beginning account is him attacking people, including the daughter Evie Rich, who's fifteen year old, fifteen years old, for uh, being a Trump supporter. And you look at his his issues, and they're not, it's nothing but their support of Trump. And he's led a, fan, a, a group of his fans to start flagging the uh, rich account. I, I talked about this earlier because they were having problems with the channel. Their, their channels were being blocked. They were being flagged as inappropriate. They were being flagged as, as pedophiles. And and, and, and it's not, again, the same thing. Maybe it's somebody who has this Trump derangement syndrome, and that's what it was. Here's the guy who was doing this. And he admits that he was doing he, that, that, that he was going after him. Because he says, children should not be on YouTube. Well, this is what they did to, to Shay Carl, to, to the Shay Tards. They took down the entire Shay, Shay Tards channel based on this opinion, thing. What happens? Who benefited from it? Well, Disney Plus. They got a number of kids off of YouTube. And they start streaming them towards Disney Plus. So it's the, the the message here is from this guy who the dad uh, the dad challenge club what channel whatever it is. The message from this guy is: Do not be amateur pedophiles. Let the certified professionals like Disney and Netflix let these pedophiles groom your children. Don't do it on your own. That's his message. Because this is what's happened. People have gone, kids have somewhat gone off of YouTube and on to Disney Plus. And, it's in, and it's now Nick Plus. Where there are known pedophiles. So as long as you're a certified pedophile with Disney and, and, and Nick, that's fine. But, I mean, I also go in the history of, of Biden and how he's got an island right next to Epstein. <laughs> That doesn't seem to bother him yet. <laughs> and then the, 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 the people who do this, and, and he's a lot like these flat earthers and, and, and so on and so forth, they're so stuck on their ideas that they can't see anything else. They don't understand this other side to these different things, and they push for these ideas as if there is no other information out there, or other people who have their own minds. And can make up the make up their mind as to whether or not they want to watch the channel or not. He says he doesn't like the channel. He doesn't like the, what they're doing in there. They're Trump supporters. They shouldn't be watched. And he wants to shut it down because and not allow anyone else to watch it because he says so. This is his logic. And as it it comes across as and this is he. he, he does his Trump derangement syndrome? I don't know whether he's a he says he's a Republican and independent, but I doubt it. Because if he were a Republican and, and independent, he wouldn't care so much about uh, someone supporting Trump. Who cares? I don't care. But this guy does. 
And so the thing is, is that when, when you see something like this, and, it, and, and he, how, how, how did I find him? He found me. He posted to my, to, to a, a, a friend request uh, and followed me on Instagram. On my Kawhi Tios. That's how I found him. And the thing is, is, watching the sources that I have, Biden and his group are planning to go back to war. They're going to start Syria up again. They're going to start Ukraine up again. Uh, they're going to try to do something in China. In other words, they're going to start wars all over the planet. It's back to what, what, what had been going on before. Trump had stopped all that. So if you like war, you like dead people, brown and other colors, then, hey, Biden's your guy. And you voted for this. This reflects who you are. Anyways, uh, it's a shortened day today for me anyways. Uh, because I did pull an all-nighter from Saturday to Sunday and... I have uh, meditation in the morning around 7.30 in the morning. We are now starting the period of, uh, of vlog, pas, uh, v, uh, v, uh, vlog, and then pas instead of mas. And pas is basically for Pascha. Right? So vlog pas. And Pascha is Passover. And we're entering that period. Uh, the meditations for the period have begun. And there is one tomorrow morning at, uh, well, not tomorrow morning. There was one in about four hours. So I'll get about four hours of sleep before I go to do my meditation again. Uh, this is after doing all night. My meditation all night. Uh, from Saturday to Sunday. So I'm still feeling kind of wiped out. And that's how things are going to be.